Tuesday or when scheduled forum. And uh, today we are doing one on the, this is the second one I should say we're doing for this month. And um, it's it's a, a month of poetry. Yeah, what am I saying? I'm sorry. It's a national poetry month. And so- It shouldn't be more than an hour. And uh, we are, uh, you know, in, in relation to that, we're doing this program, which has to do with our artists whose, whose music uh, can relate to poetry in, in any and every way. But I, my position is just to open up this forum today. And I, you know, I'm used to saying forum, but it's one of those things. Uh, we can call it a show today. <laughs> but uh, this is the UNIAACL Rehabilitating Committee. And uh, we deal with, you know, we, it was founded by Marcus Garvey. And let's face it. Uh, it, it's about African people, and everything we do is about African people. And uh, we open our meetings normally with some kind of ritual. What we do here at uh, the Freedom Friday Forum is that we do, we do the pledge to the flag, uh, we do the preamble to the Constitution, and uh, we may share with you as well the objects and aims of the UNIACL. Now, firstly, let me apologize beforehand if I uh, break into any call for sniffle or anything like that, because I'm a little bit under the weather, I'm recovering. Okay, so let me start with the official pledge to the flag. I commit my body, mind, and spirit to the protection, defense, and security of the red, black, and green. I dedicate my life to the redemption of Mother Africa and the liberation of her scattered black children. I accept for myself and my descendants the teachings of universal African nationalism, and I promise that our children will be instilled with the purpose and knowledge of themselves as African people in order that the cause of our struggle will neither falter nor fail until all black people are free and united through one God, one aim, one destiny. All right, uh, that's our pledge to the flag. Now I'll give you the preamble to the Constitution. So bear with me, because we feel that this is absolutely necessary that anyone who comes on this program or anyone who, has, who sees it at some point will understand what the UNIACL is all. Hold up, Baba Mosi. Putu, Putu, please mute yourself. Oh, Sam, yeah, thanks. Go ahead, Baba Mosi. I'm sorry. Oh, no, don't be sorry. Okay, you have to do that. <laughs> the Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League is a social, friendly, humanitarian, charitable, educational, institutional, constructive, and expansive society and is founded by persons desiring to the utmost to work for the general uplift of the Negro peoples of the world. And the members pledge themselves to do all in their power to conserve the rights of our noble race and to respect the rights of all mankind, believing always in the brotherhood of man and the fatherhood of God. The motto of our organization is one God, one aim, one destiny. Therefore, let justice be done to all mankind, realizing that if the strong oppresses the weak, confusion and discontent will ever mark the path of man. But with love, faith, and charity towards all, the reign of peace and plenty will be heralded into the world, and the generations of men shall be called blessed. So, uh, that's it for the preamble of the Constitution. It gives you a very big picture of who we are. You don't need to hear anything else, but, but of course, we need to let you know what are our aims and objectives. Okay, so I'll give that to you. The objects of the Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League shall be 
to establish a universal confraternity among the race, to promote the spirit of pride and love, to reclaim the fallen, to administer to and assist the needy, to assist in civilizing the backward evils of Africa, to assist in the development of independent Negro nations and communities, to establish commissionaries of agencies in the principal countries and cities of the world for the representation and protection of all Negroes, irrespective of nationality, to promote a conscientious spiritual worship among the native tribes of Africa, to establish I just I just read a part there that uh, <laughs> that uh, it's, it's it's you know folks it's an old it's something written in the a century ago so I'm trying to mind my language okay to establish universities colleges acad academies and schools for the racial education and culture of the people to conduct a worldwide commercial and industrial intercourse for the good of the people, to work for better conditions in all Negro communities. Old language, but you know, I think you understand and you know the meaning. When we say Negro, we mean Black or African. It's, inter it's interchangeable for us. And I, uh, I hope you understand that clearly. All right, that is all I'm going to do in this opening part, because as you may notice, I'm a little uh, stuffy. So my brother, Sangor, I'll turn this over to you so you can continue with your good work. Well, first, Baba Mosi, we want you to, you know, relax. We want you to get well. I know you're recuperating. And I know our journey to the VI was so powerful. And I know when we got back, it was so much happening. But take your time, Baba. We really respect you. Baba Mosi is not only the president of Division 330, uh, the Woodson Banneker Jackson Bay Division 330, but he's also the Minister of Information of the UNIA ACL RC 2020. For those that wanna know when we say RC, we're talking about re, uh, rehabilitating committee. Uh, we are the government of the UNIA ACL rehabilitating committee tied to our ancestral links all the way back to Garvey and the, Gar and the race first universal African nationalists that preceded Garvey. So I just wanted to clarify that. I wanna also welcome brother Congo, our vice president, and we're gonna get right into it. As Baba Mosi said, normally we do on Freedom Fridays, we try to do the best we can to not only uplift and educate and inform our people, not only on the work that we're doing, but the work they need to be doing in order to improve themselves. When we say universal improvement, we mean that. So brothers and sisters know that tonight is a special Freedom Friday dealing with message, mu music and movement or music, message and movement. They all are synonymous M's and very important. There is no movement real culturally tied to Mobutu and uh, Ubuntu and Mahat and ancient Africa if it's not with rhythm music, message, and movement. Y'all got to overstand that. When you, you hear some of our great guests tonight, uh, you're going to overstand a little more. Uh, we also, on April the 1st, had none other than uh, one of the watch uh, prophets with us, Elder Father uh, uh, Amin, and, and, me, and he was just really incredible. So if you have not seen that, please revisit that on our YouTube channel or our Facebook page. For those on Facebook, we welcome you. As I say, we're gonna get started. We know we really appreciate uh, uh, Mama Ivy Hilton for joining us. She's gonna be first up. And uh, believe me, brothers and sisters, when I say healing music, Sister Ivy is all about that. Uh, she's gonna talk about that. We got brother Ross Ledge with us. We have brother Putu with us and we have our good brother Jamal Gray with us. We wanna also congratulate Jamal Gray who I think is a, 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 a has a newborn uh, a youth that just came in the world and he is taking time out now. I know his time and schedule is tight because uh, he's not only still celebrating that new life in the world, but that's what we work for, Brother Jamal. We're working for generations to come that we might not even get a chance physically to meet, but we're putting structure together so that they can get back on track because we know the world has gone drunk and confused with the wrong kind of energy. And we do know that what comes around goes around. So we know Garvey lives, our ancestors live. So without any further ado, I'm not going to do a long introduction, but I want to tell you this is my queen sister. And when I mean sister, I mean just that. She's very humble. 
but she for years has been blessing us not only with a, a beautiful voice, but also uh, educational ways and means of how music can heal us. Uh, I'm gonna let her explain what I mean by all of that. But brothers and sisters, when you jump up and dance, it is about healing. So if you're playing the right kind of music, then you heal well. If you're playing the wrong kind of music, oh, uh, I don't know, you might break a leg, but you know what I'm talking about. You gotta play the right kind of music, get on the dance floor and get rid of all of your constrictions. So without any further ado, my dear sister, Ivy Hilton. Well, thank you, my brother. And I'm sitting here feeling so blessed. I'm surrounded by these beautiful brothers. And I don't know when the last time that I was surrounded by so many beautiful brothers all at the same time. And it's, I don't know. I don't see any other um, sisters on Mama the call. Tendai, Mama Tendai is on. She oh, she is? Okay, right good. come on through there. Because um, this is very, very special. Um, and I'm so happy to be able to come and talk about music, see, the one thing for me, Sengor, is that I, I'm just a channel and I make myself available and I listen to the intones to find what needs to be done. And then, but there is some science behind all of this too. The whole idea of the resonance, the whole idea of um, frequencies and understanding that how music comes to me is through the frequency of my mind, my heart, and my eyes. So you, you sit there as a, as a channel and you allow these frequencies to come and I, I just hear them in my head and then I go search for them, but they didn't come to me just like that. It, it came, they came over a period of time. So now I understand this work that I do, I call sound vibronics, which is a, a mindfulness methodology um, to use sound frequencies for healing. And I say that with this particular type of music, it, it translates a soul language. So our chakra system is what we're really focused on when we're doing our music. When we hear certain keys, like in the chakra system, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you know, um, it actually connects with the endocrine system. And so that each one of our cells in our body literally resonates to a specific frequency and in a pattern of vibration. So yes, we hear a lot of the music that, that we listen to, um, we listen to on a daily basis is like on a 440 Hertz. So, and, and I wanna talk a little bit about that and I don't wanna to go too deep into it because it gets real scientific and that's not where I am. I, I'm aware of it. I know what kind of frequencies I need and I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but when we listen on a daily basis, it's usually around 440. And in that case, um, it's like a, a tuning of between 440 and 432, which if we're listening to 440 and 432 Hertz, then we are moving into a cycle of healing. There are some other uh, frequencies that really resonate the lower self. And you can hear it when you hear music, what part of your body starts beating will tell you exactly what that frequency is and what you are really being absorbing into your body and into your cells. I believe our ancestors, the knew and understood the power of sound. I think they knew and understood how to move that negative energy, that static energy from out of their bodies. I really believe they understood how to access these frequencies to push through really the trauma that they went through and still we rise. So there's some medicine in this music. And I say that sound vibronics, understanding frequencies and that soul language, how to heal the chakra system in the body is the new medicine for the 21st century. You're, you're on mute. <laughs> That happens all the time. I know, I know. I did that because I was so, I wanted to listen and I was just making noise in the background because I'm so inspired by what you said, but you, you, didn't, you didn't take 
any time at all breaking down a whole lot. And I wanna explore a little more with you because uh, for those that do not know, I want you to let people know the kind of work not just that you're doing around healing, but the works that you've done in terms of singing and, and, and your ancestral ties. I believe it's an ancestor that was a great, great vocalist that you have some bloodline ties to. I would, I wish you would just elaborate a little on that. I mean, you're so humble. Okay. And I love that. Right. But let people well, know uh, who they talk, who they're dealing with here. So I was 30 years old and that was almost um, 35, six so many years ago, um, when my aunt, my great aunt, who is now turning 100 years old this month, um, said, I want to have an event because I want to give certain things to the family. Um, and this was, you know, a while ago now. And I said, okay. So when we went to the dinner, she gave me documents that showed how Marian Anderson, because my maiden name is Anderson, is a great aunt. Or she, they didn't call it that because I think there's a few little family secrets involved. But um, we know that we come from the Anderson clan. And so when I found that out, I was almost 30 years old. So now I realized that the work that she did to break through the barriers of racism is kind of like tr transitioning into the kind of work that I do that breaks through the barriers of trauma, that breaks through the barriers of emotional trauma. And also just the whole idea of elevating our consciousness to a higher level of awareness so that we can connect with the divine. So much of my music is sacred. All of it is sacred. And um, I, I've traveled the world. I've been on, you know, tours where I've traveled all over Europe. You, you went on mute. You muted yourself. And India. Um, I just recently came back from India a few years ago, just before the pandemic. And I, and I, I learned certain languages. And I, uh, while I was there, I learned the, some Hindi language so that I could sing and do that uh, healing music in a way that the people in India could, could understand. But what they didn't realize is that, you know, in India, I, oh man, when I stepped out on that stage, it, it was the size of a half of a, a, a football field. <laughs> and it was 10,000 people out there. And I just like, I was like, whoa, you know, when you go out there and they're all looking at you and they don't speak English. Um, but when I began to sing the words, the, the mantras that they gave to me and I learned the mantras and I started singing the mantras, they just went off and nobody could really understand why. And I told them, well, it's because of the frequencies that, that are used because these frequencies literally speak to the soul. And it's like our soul is lying there waiting for this nourishment. And when we get it, it's almost like, you know, when you're, when you're in church, a lot of people can, can relate to this. When you hear that certain note or you feel that certain vibration, you wanna jump up. <laughs> So it literally moves the spirit. So our music is sacred in its, in its own right, which I call an esoteric art of sound frequencies. So once you start learning that soul language, you can design the music to address any cir circumstance, just like any doctor would create and write a prescription. Uh, Avi, I really appreciate that. And just one more little piece that I wanna add. I see behind you, you have your crystal bowls and I know what that means. I don't know whether everybody that is viewing them quite understand, give us a little, little history on the crystal bowls and how important they are in sound. Okay, well, um, the singing crystal bowls, the ones that you are looking at right now are, are made of pure alabaster crystal quartz and they are designed to bring perfect pitch harmony. And what we also know about electromagnetic energy, because we are electromagnetic energy, um, that what happens is... Uh -oh. Oh you, you, you tuned somebody oh. in with your Blacktricity. <laughs> <They tried to laughs> <get 
I don't even know how that happened. You know, technology is a little bit much. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so the crystal bowls ring perfect pitch harmony. And I have elevated my collection to alchemy bowls. And these alchemy bowls are literally made with pure crystals. So I'm talking rubies and gold and amethyst. And each one of these um, alkaloids, literally when you ring them at certain uh, frequencies, they, they penetrate at the cellular level. So the crystal bowls are musical instruments that are designed to release any blockages that might be in the human body and in the atmosphere. Excellent, thank you so much. Uh, you know, and with that, uh, we're gonna we're gonna come back to you too, Ivy, because I know a lot of people have some questions, and and and, and you know that that's okay about that electricity. And so, but I really appreciate it. You know, we wanted you to go first because uh, what you're dealing with with the music is relevant to what everybody deals with in music, whether they realize the science or or the or the uh, 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 universal phenomenon behind it. They you know they feel it. And but yes, but, 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 yes, exactly. Because because it's like you know when the music when the music hits you the right place, you got to move, and that brings to move. brings me to my next guest, who happens to be a brethren who is not only from the Banica City area in D.C., but is not only uh is a starch pan Africanist, but not only a great reggae artist, a great go go artist, but he's a master rego artist. And Ray, if you don't know what Rago is, Ross Ledge is going to let you know. And I'm telling y'all, it, it is no joke. Not only do you hear Bob Marley and Chuck Brown in all the songs that my brother Ross does, you got to hear what Ross does. Ross Ledge himself, the founder, uh, creator of Rago music. Without any further ado, Ross Ledge, speak to us, brother. You got to unmute yourself first. Bless up, bless up, bless up, and give thanks. You can hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm also watching YouTube Live, trying to refresh my page uh, while we're here. I just got to say first, before I go forward, um, before I go forward, man, I have to thank the panel, Baba Mosi. I don't know how I'm going to be able to follow Mama Iris Sabir. That whole thing was just powerful with the entire 440 and knowing the vibrations that we, you know, feeling music on. Brother Puto, bless up yourself, Aya. Zendaya and Jamal Gray, bless up yourselves as well. Kings of Kings. Again, as Baba Singor said, I'm Ross Lidge. I'm known throughout the DC area and probably amongst the Pan-African diaspora now as uh, the godfather of the Rego movement. Rego is roots rock reggae dancehall music linked with a strong Washington DC pocket beat. Um, and like I say, it's the go-go and Rego to keep it, the party in reggae, you know what I mean? But it is positive, it's the only form of, I say today, one of the truest, purest, and the longest, if it's not the only, I can tell you it is the longest running form of DC form of music that has pure positive speech on it and a pure positive message in it. I stand firm on positive lyrics. I've been a lyricist. I started out as a lyricist and go-go. Um, and as I got the blessing to just, you know, become Rastafari and let Rastafari come through me and out of me and connect and communicate that way, um, I had to keep positive words, sound, and speech. That's not something that you can uh, toy with, joke with, jump on the fence with. You know, if, you, if you're gonna say you're Rastafari, be true to it, you know? And not, it's a way, Rasta is a way of life. So not just speak it, you have to live it. Now to a lot of my other fellow artists, young artists listening, you know, Enough about me, the, the thing that I want to stress to a lot of you is this road, when you're talking about truth and rights and music and positive speech, it is not always the most popular road. 
It is not always the most lucrative road. They're going to give you instant gratification and instant money right away. There will be many who chant you down and say, that's not going to work. You can't do it or this and that. But, you know, again, this is the UNIA, Marcus Garvey. There's a few things that I like to stress inside of that. Once you accept for yourself, Garvey said, self-confidence, self-reliance, and self-awareness. There's a lot of things to get into in this uh, Western Hemisphere of capitalism, but I assure you, as I tried all forms of whatever it is to make money myself, the best product that I found that I have to offer to the world globally that I can stand on and stand behind, the best thing that I can sell anybody is me. You know what I mean? I'm the best product that I can offer. So I learned to invest in me, invest everything in me, and uh, that's self-confidence. I learned to rely on myself, be aware of myself, you know? So that's self-confidence, self-awareness, and self-reliance. And uh, so that kind of beats out what we're talking about when we're saying the negative feedback and the negative charge you're going to get when people say you don't do it or you can't or why you do it or stop. You just have to continue. You have to go through because any truth and rights, anything positive must prevail. Okay? So that's what Rago is primarily built on and that's why it has prevailed. Um, uh, another thing I want to say about Garveyism you know, Marcus Garvey also told us, whatever you do, you know, to us as Pan-Africans living here in the Western Hemisphere, don't give up your day job. You know what I mean? Because you're going to need this for repatriation. Now, the thing with that, I know all of us say we are entrepreneurs. Yes, I am too. We're entrepreneurs. I don't want to work for the man. But however, until we build ourselves, until we build ourselves to grow there in our entrepreneurs, you're going to need some seed money. You're going to need some, like I say, no, people support Gogo, people support reggae. I didn't find very many people at all. And I got to say thank you to Baba Senghor because from this thing was concept when I was just little and trying. Baba Senghor would show up in his show and he had his walking stick with him. And when that 440 vibration hit him, Mama Ivy, that's when I knew I was doing the right thing. Because Baba said, go here, sit down. But when that beat get up under, he throw that cane up in the air and he got some dance he do with his feet move. It's like an old 70s funk shuffle. And I know I got it right then. When you watch people, move, it's such a joy to watch people like that move and know you move them. You know what I mean? That's the joy of knowing what you're talking about, Mama Ivy, that 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 vibration when they hit it and feel it. So Baba Simco has been a true, true supporter. And the reason why I'm highlighting that because the higher your star rise, and when you start getting this blessing, you're gonna see the wolves and sheep clothing also around you. You're gonna see those friends who were supposed to be frenemies. You will see those come around too as your beacon of light star shine. I've been blessed to, you know, go to the motherland Africa, Ghana more than once, twice, and perform there, the Black Star State. And um, it was a different experience each time. The last time I was there, I would say, Africa really taught me my experiences there to come back in, you know, Sankofa, but also return here and embrace. It's, it was time for me to celebrate what I've done and what I've achieved because I went there looking at certain brothers like, you know, equal levels. We're just brothers on the same level. And they more so was treating me like, nah, you got it. You doing it. You done it already. So they looking at me at a different level. And that showed me that I had to learn to begin to treat myself and respect myself like that. And use the things, you know, the advantages that I do have in this Western hem Hemisphere to celebrate and present myself like that. You know, any of you young artists who are out there struggling and trying, I'll give you two more things real quick before I go, because I can get long-winded. 
always invest in yourself, merchandise, you know, sell yourself, merchandise, brand yourself, merchandise, you know, I don't know if you can see this, and it has gotten so far that this shop you see behind me, red, black, and green, this is my basement, but this basement is officially named the Black Harmony after my wife, because she's Harmony Black, but the Black Harmony Marcus Garvey Determination Center. Because when I was laid off one of my last jobs in construction, I made a vow and I have it written down on a piece of paper. I was looking for it, I'll find it for y'all before I go. But I wrote down initials, the initials to this, and I'm gonna say it fast. The initials are to a saying that I said, I shall never go to work for them again. And I pasted it up there. The same day I was laid off, I had a vinyl cutter come in. My wife ordered it for me for Father's Day, and I started making shirts for my band and my product, and now I make merchandise and product for a lot of bands throughout, not just myself, but the DMV. So always sell and promote yourself. I make merchandise, shirts, mugs, tumblers. We have earrings, and we're not performing at festivals. We have our day job still, as Garvey told us. But this is also our own independent creation to support ourselves and to help support Rago. Because you're gonna get those musicians behind you, although you may be playing a small gig, it's very important to you. But that keyboard player and that bass player that you really need, who sound the best, who's coming to play with you, he might not even care about reggae, but he can play it good and he demands $200. If the gig don't pay enough to get them, but your sound and your vibration need to get there, you do this for support and making and make your sound sound good. When I went down to Africa, nobody knew about Rago. I walked the streets giving away these. These are my flash drives, okay? And I have CDs. I, who in Africa has the money to buy them? Seriously. You know, give away your product, investing in you. It's going to return to you. I went to Africa with probably 300 CDs and maybe 50 of these. And everywhere I went from Ghana to Cape Coast to anywhere, you started hearing cab drivers and everybody playing that music. You know, my song All to the East ended up being named the official theme song for repatriation by the commissioner um of the Rastafari Council for repatriation. He put the song on radio and named it the Think Fishy theme song of for repatriation, you know? So that was the creation given itself back to me, rewarding me more than any money that I could have gotten for this for my positive speech and my positive word sounds. That was the payment that I received, you know, because more than to a uh, Europe, I love to go to Europe eventually, but I needed to go to Africa first, I always felt. And the universe in its own way rewarded me for my dedication and commitment to it, you know. So I'm very, very grateful to the most high for that. I'm grateful for all of you who do and have supported Rago Music, and I'm definitely blessed to be a part of this platform today. Thank you. Ross, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Ross. And uh, I just want to add, that just for those who do not know, another humble, another humble artist, R Ross Ledge is not only uh, a great artist, he's an ambassador with the, of, of music and movement with the Pan-African Federalist Movement. And I know that, and that's an international movement. And then not only that, I, I y'all heard he's, he's a starch Garveyite. And Ross, I got I got a bone to pick, and I'm not gonna do it live, but I'm gonna get with you because I want we need we need you in our ranks, man. I'm talking about active paid member because the kind of stuff you just dropped is the kind of work that we've been all doing. And 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 you know, you and I have known each other for a long time. You know, uh, Baba Mosi is the president of the division here, and uh, we're looking for. And I know you not know youth youth no more. You 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 got youth yourself. And a lot of yeah. people, a lot of people need to know though that Ross Ledge is not only a de dedicated Rasta 
mind, but he's a Garveyite roster mind, meaning a race first roster mind to do the work for the people. And that does not mean we anti anybody to so those that's listening, because us Garveyites are not anti anybody other than, other than bad, people, bad, bad energy people. We don't want that. We want you to raise your energy up. And we know we all got a lower self. So don't, you know, we're not trying to put ourselves above nobody because all of us come from down low too. All of us struggled and we've seen the hard times. But without any further ado, I'm going to segue into Africa and my good brother, uh, Putu, for those who may not know. And Putu, I want you to just, you got to let people know your background a little bit and, you know, let people know, you know, what you do. I know what you do. I know. And you, he's another, he's another uh, a PAFM ambassador, a Pan-African Fellas Movement ambassador of music and a brother that I've had the opportunity of working with. And our brother, Sam, who's in the background, uh, handling our technical stuff later on. If he wants to come uh, on, on a board when we start doing the discussion, I want him to please do because him and I have good relationship with Brother Putu. And for those who do not know that are listening to this, Brother Putu just finished doing a big thing with two of our ambassadors, uh, our, our UK ambassador, Brother Shakara, who is a, a hard hitting artist himself and is looking forward to this. And he's now not in the UK, he just traveled to Sierra Leone to hook up with Chief Fode, another artist who is, who is a Pan-African Pan activist and a builder with the Black Star Action Network International. So it's a big family affair going on here. So without any further ado, Putu. Mute, unmute yourself, bro. Unmute. <laughs> you know, I had to I had to do it like everybody else too. So <laughs> I to do that. It's like, no. Nah. Um, but yeah, peace and blessings. Um, appreciate that, Baba San Gore, and many blessings to everybody who is tuning in right now, um, who is on the platform and who is watching on whatever platform. You know, it's your man Putu live and direct. Um, I do go by the Liberian American Pan Africanist. Um, I'm an artist, I'm a grassroots organizer, um, among a uh, number of other things. Um, man, I'm just so privileged to be on this conversation in this forum. Um, as far as a background, another interesting note here, there's a lot of go-go and um, DC, Maryland vibes in here. Um, just, I, I, I like to say, man, I had the honor and privilege of, um, of, of, uh, doing the interview for uh, Chuck Brown's last interview before he passed, he passed I, I, I had gotten the opportunity to interview him. Um, for those of you who don't know that Chuck Brown is the legend when it comes to Go Go, he helped you know put it out there, you know. Um, but uh, so yeah, I do have some connections to the DMV. You know, spent um, 80s, 90s, late late 80s, 90s. My parents emigrated to um, the uh, DC area in the 1980s, mid 80s from 19, from, from Liberia, West Africa, uh, while there was a lot of political turmoil um, going on in the country. So, um, you know, I'm the first in my generation to, um, you know, to in, in, in the immediate generation to, um, to be raised in Americas and um, to understand what's really going on in America. Um, Cause a lot of times when you're coming from the African background or anywhere around the world, unless you get a chance to really kind of be in America, you don't really understand America. And I say that to say that I, I definitely use the music as a way of putting out that information to uh, my brothers and sisters who are in Liberia and Africa, and then vice versa, you know, giving, shedding some light about what's going on in Liberia and, um, in, in America. And um, so we're talking about music. I like just to touch on one or two things. I know we're gonna be having the, um, you know, this, this forum, um, but we hear, um, we've, we've talked about the, the spirit and like, that's what, that's what music is. It comes from the spirit, uh, it's, the, uh, it's, a, it's a vibe. And I wanna talk about how we have reggae, which, you know, uh, we talk about Garveyism. Garveyism is heavily, heavy, you know, um, was a heavy influence in reggae, you know. Um, and then we also have hip hop and um, we have Afrobeat. So 
what I do in this modern generation, seeing the history of how reggae, all of those musics, all of those, those, those um, forms and genres of music, and shout out to Rego too, you know, all of those forms of um, those genres actually emerge um, as a voice for um, us as a people at a time during times when, you know, we weren't being represented. And not only that, it was a form of communication, you know, um, it was a way for us to interact with each other and communicate on levels that the enemy couldn't, you know, even understand from the Negro spirituals, you know, to the blues. And I like to say that hip hop at a first, you know, when it first came about, the the power structure didn't understand what was going on. They didn't understand the communication. But once they recognized the power, once they recognized that we was using hip hop, this you know, um, as this this genre, this art form, in the '80s and the '90s to communicate, that's when you see the change. Um, you know, there was a shift, and we're talking about a lot of negative vibrations that um, that we hear now when it comes to the music. Um, one thing that I do is I use the music to um, to put positive energy into it, like everybody is saying here. And um, I noticed that um, a lot of the youth sometimes they feel like if they do positive music, sometimes it would come off corny or come out. You know, they don't they worried about how people are going to view them. And I've been able to, you know, along with some other other folks, been able to see how we can use how we can put the music out there in a way that make people feel comfortable. Like, yo, I can, I can rock with that, you know? And as a community, I think one thing that we can do um, is be a bit more um, cooperative with our artists. It's already hard as an artist, just generally speaking, you know, there's many artists on here that can, speak, that can attest to that. It's already tough as an artist. But then when you're doing music that has a certain consciousness, certain message about the movement, um, we do know that there are entities and forces out there that, you know, they have gatekeepers, they have people who want to suppress that music. So we as a community, um, we have to figure out ways to promote our artists in such platforms like this and um, open up, you know, labels or opportunities for us to put that music out there. And I'll just use the opportunity to say that very soon um brother sam is in the background too we have a project called changing the narrative um and it's being put forth um by uh, those of us who got connected in the paf family we have this entity called the pan-african party which is a platform specifically geared towards projecting music that is um uplifting to the red black and green and um given the audience and the listeners an opportunity to become a part of some of the grassroots organizations and endeavors that we are all part of. So I don't want to be too long winded. I don't know how many, too much time we have and I know we're going to go around, but long story short, um, right now is the time right now with the way the world is going on for us to use music, which is one of the most powerful tools, the quick way to spread the message. It has to you. They're on TikTok, they're on Instagram. We need to put all our energy behind the music and the entertainment. And um, that's the way that we're going to reach the youth who are going to be carrying on the legacy and, the, you know, um, building upon the history, you know, as we stand on the shoulders of those who came before us. So let's attack it. Let's keep on moving forward with the music. I shall leave it at that for right now. So thank you, Brother Putu. And I, I, let me just, I want to thank Ross, Ledge, and Putu. Just keeping it real, because this, this is what it's all about. See, see, I know the kind of work y'all are doing, but the world needs to not only know the kind of work you're doing, but to be motivated, supportive, and to be able to emulate their own. I, what Ross was saying was so important, because self-reliance is deep. But when an artist is self-reliant, and I know uh, Brother Corcoran Hope was going to be with us tonight, my stepson, and he's traveling. He's doing a gig, and he's a new parent. And so, Brother Jamal, I really appreciate you as a brand new parent 
uh, being, being being here with us. But uh, Corcoran, we're going to try to get Corcoran here with the tour on the 22nd. Well, he's going to be traveling with Kenny Garrett again, but he said he's going to be in the UK and he wants to still do this because last year, me and Ross and, and uh, Baba Most, not last year, before the pandemic, uh, Brother Sam hosted a, 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 an event with Brother Ross Ledge, Brother Corcoran and uh, uh, Bomani and uh, a sister, Baba Mosi was there. And it's the same kind of work Putu is talking about that's critical for us. And I want everybody to understand, you know, everybody can do something relevant to aid in assisting this project. Our grandchildren, that those of us that are grandparents, we wanna make sure they get the right vibrations, y'all, because it takes root when you're young, you're listening to the right kind of music. When you become older, it, it resonates and you pass that on. So we're building structure, Putu, not only for today, but we definitely want to change the paradigms for today, which leads me into my next guest, how important he is and what the work that he's doing, because it's critical that we, 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 we sand Kofa, we reach back, but we also have to be creative about ways and means of how we do things so we can do it a little better because we up against some real serious wrecking industry kind of stuff that's designed to keep us dumbed down. And so for real, for real, all the positive brothers and sisters doing the work need to come closer together, be more supportive and clear. And that's what this is all about, providing a, a, a black print for those that come behind us to motivate those who are here still with us. And, you know, I, I'm a Funkadelic. I grew up on the Parliament Funkadelic, y'all. And, 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 and I just want to tell you, see, uh, it, it ain't about the individuals or the personalities. It's about the vibration. Because like Ross Ledge, Putu, and Mama Ivy has so, been so clear on is we can do whatever we wish if, it's, if we call to do it. The question becomes is the commitment and the resources that are required to get it done. Now, there's a brother named Jimmy Gray that I have to recognize here. And J Jamal, I, just forgive me for a minute because anytime we mention and talk about Black Fire, I get excited because I learned most of what I know about musicology from Baba Jimmy Gray, who's a powerful ancestor who is not only with us now, but set a positive uh, 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 a precedent for supporting artists, not only in the DC area, the DMV, and really all around the world. Because if you, if you really, uh, know what I know about Black Fire, and, and, and for those who do not know and don't get it in this program from my good brother Jamal Gray, make sure you Google and check it out because I think Jamal is going to lay something on us and any of y'all can please put info in the chat how people can get your music, how people can contact you to book you for gigs. So Ivy, uh, go in the chat and make sure you put that in there. Ross, I know you already did it. Please keep doing it. And later on, we're going to make sure we try to transfer that information over to Facebook. So without any further ado, we're going to keep going. I know y'all didn't come to this just to hear me run my mouth, but I'm motivated, I'm moved, and I might not be a musician, but I sure got the blacktricity. But in fact, I, am a, I do play percussion. So without any further ado, though, my good brother, Jamal Gray, who is not only the son of Baba Jimmy Gray, but is carrying on the blacktricity, black fire legacy, and he's going to break it up for us. So brother Jamal. Thank you. Thank you. Let me know if you guys can hear me. I, I, I as Brother Baba Singo said, I do have uh, a four-day-old <laughs> baby girl, uh, Sage Molly Gray, who we just brought home um, yesterday, uh, actually. So we just getting settled in back at home. Uh, I have a nine-year-old son, Cairo Gray, as well. He'll be on his way shortly. So I appreciate you guys for your time and sharing and allowing me to share. Um, and yeah, I, I'm a Washingtonian, you know, from Banneker City, really Northeast and Northwest uh, is where I spent most of my time and, you know, where my family history is. My father, Jimmy Gray, uh, he comes from the Gray and Penny lines and those families specifically go back, uh, you know, Piscataway and, and which is the indigenous people of, of the Maryland and DC area, one of the indigenous nations of this area uh, and also just black Southern um, and, and specifically in Northeast Kenilworth neighborhood, Kenilworth Park neighborhood, uh, Aquatic Gardens area uh, off of Kenilworth Avenue. Our family goes back about a hundred years there. So 
Um, and that's specifically on Douglas Street. Uh, and you can you can do some knowledge about that area. I mean, it's a lot of music history there, even in Kenilworth Park, like take it back to the Stone Soul Picnic and days like that. Um, so I think my uh, music is, is certainly um, something that I practice, but I consider myself just to be a student of, of culture in general. And through music, I've been able to explore uh, visual art, uh, curation of visual art, um, event organization, um, organizing in general, alongside a lot of different groups. Um, but but music being a vehicle for me to build a sense of self and a sense of confidence. And I think that spirit um, resonates in what I hear the brother Ross and sister Ivy talking about. Um, and we all find it sometimes through different channels, you know, through different schools, so to speak, e even in DC, I think one great thing about growing up here, especially in the eighties and nineties, when we talk about like the Pan-Africanist movements, uh, the different spiritual faiths that people will follow. I mean, from, from Rastafari to the Yoruba to, you know, all different types of spiritual movements and political movements that were happening in DC give you so many different uh, trees to pull fruit from as far as finding your identity as a uh, you know black identified person you know black as we're called um, person from DC in this area and it's spread and, and of course through migration and, and through everything those roots are connected to a lot of different places internationally throughout the diaspora but even you know to our neighbors to the south like the Carolinas where my mother's side of the family comes from and, and how those traditions get shared and I think music is a place for me to be able to express that um, my father, Jimmy Gray, was a radio programmer, and, and uh, my parents actually met working at WPFW in the 80s. You know, my, my mother on the cultural affairs side, uh, news, studying under uh, brothers like Baba Askia Muhammad, who recently transitioned, uh, who was a big inspiration. And, and, you know, jazz and justice, as they call it, I mean, they've been about that work, about bridging music and activism, you know, music and, and, and identity, music and and current affairs and awareness you know before even woke was that phrase it was like that awareness through the music and peace and positivity as the as the brothers were talking about and healing music um specifically black fire a record label that my father started in 1975 in washington dc the records uh in fact i have one of i have a bunch of them with me if you can see this this is African Rhythms by a group called Plunky and One is a Juju, which is the first record released on Black Fire Records in 1975. Uh, on the back, you can see, uh, this is a reissue from 1993. The record was released in 75, but it says Black Fire Music, 4409 Douglas Street, Northeast, Washington, D.C., 20019. So this is like really a, a piece of art created um, in the DC community that was able to make international and national acclaim uh, independently and go on to be sampled by brothers like Jay Dilla and Mad Lib. And so, um, I mean, I think the great thing, like I said, about growing up in DC and even in, in uh, the household that I was lucky enough to be in was learning by osmosis and never really being forced, like given enough freedom and structure to kind of learn uh, and 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 practice and find the best path for myself by still having these pillars around, whether it be a brother like Baba Singer or who we would see in Freedom Plaza or we'll see at Brother Bay's place or, you know, at Blue Nile or the Pyramid, you know, across from Blue Nile, the Pyramid, when they used to have a bookstore and a bakery, you know, um, it, you know, so many different paths, like I said, that we could explore. And I think the beauty of even the musicians like a Corcoran Holt, um, there's brothers like Alan Jones, mm -hmm. Noble Jolly. It's it's yeah. a lot of brothers that we could speak on and sisters, of course, excuse me. A lot of black folks from the area and, and other people of other cultures that have studied amongst us that know like, you know, it's a rich history and live music has always been at the front of that. And through music, you know, naturally, it makes me think of even places like the warehouse in Northeast, the, that was basically a, a space that um, people of the culture could get together and and it was pushing black entrepreneurship through food, through herbalists, through through the music, of course, through just culture in general, through massage therapists, all these other things. Brothers like Dr. Sebi would be there and his acolytes and 
you know, so being around spaces like that, that were pushing without an idea of like a capitalistic way, but pushing a, a wealth building kind of thought, but from a way of uh, that's true to identity, that's positive, And that was about uplifting each other. So, I mean, I was, I'm thankful to have examples like that to be uh, raised around and to learn from by osmosis. So certainly like I, I've told people over the years, like, you know, culture is my privilege because I've been able to tap in and see you know, and, and and be a fly on the wall amongst a lot of giants and just to absorb things. And and I think, you know, I, I haven't really prepared anything and I don't want to take too much of y'all time. And I, I can share more about what we're working on. Music, again, has been a vehicle to express spirit for me, express identity, and also to kind of find and refine myself. Because I think for me, art and culture was something that came so naturally, but it was alternative and it was Black. Um, so I had to go out and seek the mainstream. And, and as I did, as any other kid growing up in the 90s and, you know, the television era, you know, we had all these different messages that we kind of had to to battle with. So, you know, I succumbed to some of those influences at times and, and went and did my own studies and lived in Philadelphia, lived in Atlanta. And it was like, OK, seeing the different experiences and also seeing the shiny things that kind of attract us that that pulled me away from the root really and pulled me away from all, off maybe my stone. And uh, I had to kind of do some rediscovery um, and, and also gain experience. And I think the, what I've learned as far as like calling yourself an artist or, or if you want to be an artist per se, and, and, and as the brother Ross said, you know, you are the product, you are your best product. And I think sometimes we struggle with that concept because maybe you're thinking, well, I don't want to commodify myself. I don't want to change myself. But I think the best artists, what they do is take elements of themselves that are unique and amplify it. You know, it's much harder to create something that's not you and try to live and maintain that as opposed to take elements of who you truly are and sit in that and be proud of that. But, but also don't use it as a tool to oppress anybody else or to take from anybody else. And I think that can end up being a lot of, uh, you know, artists, once you get into certain, you know, it, it can be tempting to, to look outside of yourself for validation and look outside of yourself, you know, and that could be through substance, through, uh, you know, losing spiritual practice. That could be through a lot of different ways. Um, I've seen brothers and sisters go through it and I've experienced it myself. But I think what kept me solid is just returning to my core, you know, and I think that's what it is. And, for, and it takes time for, for others to find that, especially if you don't, if you aren't fortunate enough to have a good support system and foundation to say, like, to, to be a reflection of, of and to look back and say, OK, this is what I'm representative of or this is who I'm representing when I'm out you know, and having a sense of responsibility and accountability around those things. Um, I'm going to keep going and I don't want to do that. No, I don't want to take Jamal, y'all time. Jamal, um, that's, that, that, that's, fine. that's fine, Jamal. We, 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 we right yeah. on point. It's just eight o'clock. We're going to get a chance for a little reasoning. But I want you to tell, tell people a little bit about the project, the, 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 the film project. And yeah, stuff like and, I, and I will drop that. Thank you. And I will drop yeah, yeah, a yeah, link for that. Yeah, definitely put it in that. But, but also um, tell people right so now. So we're working. Yeah, thank you, Baba Single. We, we're working on a film that's documenting the story specifically of Black Fire Records. This is a, a short film, uh, and it'll speak on the uh, the times that were, you know, D.C. and the country in the late 60s to early 70s and the things that led into the real high level of art and music and things that was creating and social movements that were happening and how, you know, people really use music as a vehicle um, it's for the same reasons that sisters and brothers are for healing, empowerment, and identity. You know, and that's what Black Fire Records was really about. Message through the music. Um, we we so the documentary. You can go to blackfiredocumentary.com. There's a trailer up for that. We should be releasing it in June. This is a documentary short that we were commissioned by the DC Humanities Organization to put forth. Um, and they've been really supportive and we were able to raise around $25,000 on our own. Uh, it's a shoot this 30 minute documentary. You know, these things are expensive when you want to do it well. And I, you know, we're great that we had support. This is a new, a reissue of a record one is of Juju, Bush Brothers and Space Rangers. It's just been reissued on a label based in London 
called Strut Records. Um, they just reissued some some Patrice Russian and Sun Ra albums as well, and they are reissuing the full Black Fire catalog stuff that was created from 1975 to 1994. Um, but thank you guys. That's that's all I really have to oh, share oh, in this oh, moment. I don't want to take no more time from y'all. No, to no share. Jamal, Jamal is fine, and I know I know if you got to go, I understand that too. But oh no, I'm here. I'm oh, here. Okay. I just don't want to take oh, no more of your time. Okay. To, you okay. know. No, 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 no. Jamal yeah. is fine. I just want. I just got one more thing, and I want everybody to open up their cameras because we get ready to have a little dialogue led by our four great guests. But I like for everybody else to come in this the conversation that can. So if you can open up your cameras, because I really don't want to include you because you won't be seen on Facebook. Uh, but if you have questions, uh, we could take those. But uh, I'm trying to make sure that uh, this ain't Facebook, it's YouTube. But I like people to not only uh, hear, but to see and feel our vibes, even though we can't touch each other right now like we want to touch each other physically, we can touch each other spiritually. And Brother Jamal, uh, talk about some of those groups that are involved with that project. I know you mentioned one that's a Juju, my good brother Plunky, and some of the yeah. some, some of the eld, older folks, I ain't gonna say elder, but some of the older folks, you know, they lit up. Mama Tendai and uh, Ivy, we all lit up, cause you know, we all grew up with that. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and, and I saw Plunky not long ago, and I was just mm -hmm. so, I mean, and, and it's just so good, because it looked like African rhythms, Right, right. African also, rhythms. Also, wasn't Sugar Bear involved too, to some extent? My brother Sugar yes, Bear, who that's I that African for. rhythm. Yeah, yeah, Sugar Bear. So, Experience Unlimited. And a lot of people don't know they got that name from the Jimi Hendrix Experience. Excellent. You know, when they first, their first record was really rock and roll and soul influenced. In yeah. fact, um, and the brother that did the artwork for the record I'm gonna show you was a brother named Malik Edwards, who yes. who was one of the main. Um, Art, artist for the Panther Party. And the he, Black Panther Bush Party, yeah, I know Malik. Now. We know Yeah, Malik, Malik Edwards, and, uh, you know, a lot of the publications he did original artwork for, and he did this piece of artwork for Experience Unlimited, their first album, if y'all can see that. I know my camera is limited, but- No, that's uh, good, that's good, there. that's good, that's good. But uh, you see the inspiration when they talk Afrofuturism, you know, this is the stuff that these brothers were, were really, um, brothers and sisters, excuse me, were exploring. At, at that time, and even Black Fire is really about that, you know, right. looking to the ancestry, but also looking towards what's next. And um, now, now, now that you mentioned that, I, I must say, my brother Jimmy Gray was also a, a, a great herbalist. I mean, he knew about herbs, yeah. he knew about right. all that kind of stuff, y'all. And not only that, he was a very, 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 very connected brother to many, many of us in the Banneker City community and still is. I want to make yeah. sure because, you know, if all what we're doing is for the ancestors. But I want to thank you, Jamal. And I know thank I, I know I know how the vibe is, uh, but but I want to congratulate you again. You got a, a four month, four day old child. Four days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you would have. And I just really know because because that's what we're really working for is the children. I mean, we still are children ourselves. Uh, right. No matter how older we may get, we're children still, uh, children of the most high, and we're children of our parents who are ancestors, and it is very important. So what I want to do right here is open up and, and first just say uh, thank you, Ivy, so much for your uh, excellent presentation. Thank you, Ross Ledge, for your excellent presentation. Thank you, Brother Putu, for your excellent presentation. Thank you, Brother Jamal. And I knew all of y'all were going to be excellent, and I know how important it is. I know a lot of times I heard Baba Mosi earlier say it was going to be like a concert, <laughs> but but for real, for real, this is a panel and it is a reasoning session. And we are talking about message, music and movement. And it's critical because our artists don't, unless you do a radio show or interview or you've got a concert coming up, sometimes you don't get the opportunity to just speak truth to power to our brothers and sisters. Y'all know what I mean. I mean, you know, and, and, and if you got a show coming up or you got a record, you got to focus on what's what you're trying to promote. But I wanted you all to promote yourselves here and to talk to the people so that the people can not only support the projects that you're involved in, but understand that you're working for a positive world. You're working to bring the world back in a positive way. And that's what art is all about. So without any further ado, I'm going to pop the first question. And I want to start with Ivy and then uh, Ross Ledge and Putu and Jamal, and then we're going to open it up to everybody. everybody. I don't know how I don't know how that. I don't know where it comes from. from. But any rate. But any rate. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 so, but any so rate. But any rate. 
My question, my question if y'all can, can hear me. Everybody, Chloe, Chloe, one here, one here. Hello? Unless you're Chloe, 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 Right, right. Everybody, everybody, right. Right. they're asking people, she's asking folks to mute the mics because I don't know where the feedback was coming from. But at any rate, without any further ado, let me get to my question so we can get going because we got a little time uh, and I'm going to let all of us have an opportunity to reason. But my question, Ivy, in this day and time, 2022, I'm going to try, try again. <laughs> Oh, this is funny. But at any rate, the question is, Ivy, give us your, your best possible advice for not only artists, but for anybody striving to bring peace into the world now going in 2022 and however you want to do that. And I know, and that's, I know that's, that's a loaded one, but just a message from you as, as what you do, uh, share with us out of love, whatever. And then Ross, Ross and, and, the same and, same and, and, and Jamal, and Jamal we'll get this party started. Party started. Okay. Well, the, you know what? The first thing that came to me when you said that, because I said, uh-oh, what's this question going to be? The first thought that came to me, Singor, is to practice tuning in to the frequency of the Most High. And when I say that, I mean really understanding how to go into the silence, how to set up your sacred space, whether it's right, you know, whatever your element is. I think somebody was speaking of that earlier. Whatever your element is, if, if oh, there was another Zoom conference I was on and we were talking about identifying your element. Is it water? Is it wind? Is it the earth? You know, um, and whatever your element is, is it fire? Put yourself in that space and then tune in to the frequency of the most high. And then that will give you the direction of what is needed in order to bring peace into the world. Ross Lynch. So, unmute, unmute, same question, same, same, same thing. Give me the question again, because I'm so tuned in to what's happening. Okay. And I'm going to tell you why. Give me the question again. Oh, oh, no problem. No problem. I said, in 2022, based on where we are today, uh, what message would you give to folks, not only artists, but everybody listening, to help bring the world more in a positive and peaceful direction? I know that's a little different, but that's the same basic question. Um, good. So I'll tell you why I was tuned in to what she said. She just said, well, right to me to answer. She gave the best answer, I would think, but um, be open to add on to what she said, be open to positive vibes, positive influences, positive messages. Allow your, your head, which is your heaven, and your inner energy to accept positivity. When you hear positivity and you enjoy it, allow don't be afraid of it. Allow yourself to explore it. Because as she, uh, Mama Sadia was saying, that is the energy that's gonna carry you. Every one of us have our own individual journey. But once you allow yourself to open up and receive something positive, to push away whatever negative energy is surrounding you, especially with music, because those seven notes, and I don't care how you put them, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, a, b, c, d, e, f, g, those seven notes, and those of you who know music know, we can coordinate three of those notes to make a chord, we can add a fifth, we can add a seventh, we can add a ninth, but those are the vibrations that move us and speak directly to our energy. So whoever you are, wherever you are, even with a tone of voice, when you hear positivity and you allow yourself, especially through music, to hear positive vibration in something you will lead you, don't be afraid of it. Open up, accept it, and go with it. And it's gonna lead you on your own particular journey was meant for you. 
Yeah, give thanks, Rod. Say one more thing, please. Go ahead, go ahead. Mama Shadiah has helped me so much, and I'm so tuned into what she's saying because I'm going to give away one secret about me. I know myself very well. I'm a high-energy performer, but when it comes to singing, I'll be honest, I can write good lyrics, I can rap and chant all day, but staying in key and, and learning how to sing, you just can't be good at everything. <laughs> you just cannot be good at everything. That's why I have my queen, Harmony Black, on stage with me. She does a lot of the singing. Yeah. Balance it out for me. But I tell him every day, Mama Shadia, I'm going to wake up with a blessing and I'm tuning into the most high. One day I'm going to have a note with this voice of mine and I'm going to be in peace so well, so well and so, and so much, much I'm going I'm to have, 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 have it. Oh, yes. Well, all I need is about an hour. Whoa, and whoa. then you'll be able to sing in key. So, 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 so you see that, Ross? You see that, Ross? Yeah. See, Ross, yeah. how th see how the family works. But anyway, I, 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 I know she knows what she's talking about, too. It's no joke. And so you better follow up on that one. <laughs> you can also get a vocal um, processor that will keep you on key. Whoa. whoa. So, Putu, same question, bro. Yes, man, it's giving some great answers. Um, and um, if I were to add to it, I would say for everybody listening to embrace healing, to embrace um, therapy, okay? Because it's like, um, because of what we've undergone in the world, there are so many different traumas and hurt conflicts, all type of things we've gone through. and sometimes to keep up with um with life in the day to day um we don't take the time to really um process you know understand how what we have gone through affects us on a day to day and so there's a lot of hurt there's a lot of misplaced anger misplaced emotions that affects how we do interact with each other and affects our ability to um function in general um, I would say that, um, you know, embracing, you know, forgiveness um, in order so that, you know, we could be forgiven. Um, there are a lot of people who are transitioning um, young and old all over the place now. And sometimes there are grudges between family members, friends, you know, people who, you know, you never thought that you would, um, you know, um, not talk to and you know by the time people transition um you're not able to do those and that that there's guilt and this burden that we you know sometimes build up and that's energy that's holding us back from being the best that we can be so um i would say healing and that's something that um, i'm pushing um we're pushing with the liberia youth movement in liberia um because we know that if your mental health your emotional health your spiritual health is not intact you know, we cannot be um, a better world. We cannot be a better people for healing. That's a great addition, Putu. Really appreciate it. Brother Jamal? Thank you. Thank you. I like those answers. Those are great. I mean, I think what I'm hearing is going inward, you know, and, and, and protecting the space that you, that you occupy. And that has me thinking about something, a, a concept recently that keeps coming back. I mean, through exploring music, especially doing music in a collective, collaborative way, and then learning more about film as well. Um, the concept of world building keeps coming back to me. You know, uh, I think a lot of sometimes and outside of music, just in general, um, a lot of the traumas and things that that uh, that we find ourselves having to navigate, a lot of it has to do with us not being in control of the environments that we occupy or wish to occupy or the, the power structures that are keeping us from having access to certain resources that could really help us thrive as the person and family that we can that we see ourselves as and i when i look back to the kind of moments where i was capturing some success especially in collaborative works it was about world building it's like putting the pieces around you that uh that help your vision to coalesce you know it's like alchemy in a way but even in a more simple sense than even trying to go scientific it's like in, in, in really 
socially, you know, a manipulative way it's called social engineering, but I'm talking about like community building, like seriously, when we talk about, um, and even creating the world and that could, and also world building in the sense of just putting um, the pieces around you to motivate yourself or having, finding the tools and resources to execute the things that you see um, could, could enhance your life and enhance the, and get you closer to the life that you would want you and your family and community be living. So world building is kind of the um, concept that I've really been, and that can be on a micro, smaller, or on a macro, like a larger, you know, just like the brother Ross saying, well, look, I'm, I'm doing the t-shirts and I'm, I'm doing my printing and, and marketing, branding. That's what he's talking about. He's creating a world around himself. It's, a, it's infrastructures and ecosystem around us that keeps us going. And I mean, plenty of movements have been doing it. Um, I just think music is one, is art, music and art in general is the industry that I found myself in because I'm not a carpenter or I'm not a blacksmith. If I was one of those things, I would approach it the same way. It's like, how do we build the factory? Well, first, you know, you got to talk to somebody with the land or learn about that. And really you got to apprentice under somebody who has the functional skills to do these things. So world building is how I look at it, you know, uh, and it's, it can be multi-layered, but that's what I would want us to focus on now. I think that's certainly what I'm putting my focus and talking to my direct community uh, of collaborators and artistic, creative, you know, entrepreneurs or, or inspiring and aspiring entrepreneurs, you know, that are inspired by by the work like people that you all are doing um, world building. That's what it comes back to. And that could be building a crew, building your family, building uh, context. You know, I heard Questlove even talk about that when he was talking about the Soul Quarian movement at one point when he had, you know, they talking to their record label to say, well, in order for our story to, to mean as much, we have to build context. So you got Badu, you got Most Def and all these people and they need a deal and they and you need to market this thing together. And this is how it is context is world building, you know, on a story when you when you think about Marvel and all of these big universes some cinematic universes that's world building so that even an insignificant story in that world becomes significant to you because you now have context of what that world is it's a more complete vision so that's where i want to that's where my focus is and i encourage everybody to kind of envision even if you can't tangibly create that right now just well, envision that that's the first creation that, that's me. very important as a man and as a woman think of so is he or so is she if you can think it you can make it happen and that's a oh, fact. I like to say from vibe, all right, coming, Ross. I like to say from vibe to spirit and then to soul. But the soul is the subject of universal life. But all of y'all's answers were, 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 were key because if we don't do those things, then you, you shouldn't even expect a shift because right now we are practicing what is called karma. We're going through karma right now for things that have not been done properly. And so what we want to do is have good karma. So we want to those things that have not been passed on to us properly or done properly by us, we want to ameliorate that and make it more positive so that our karma will be good. So when we're on the other side, looking back, we can see improvement. And that is very important. Uh, Ross Ledge. Real quick, I got to in, in, in inject a piece of cultural humor, humor here with Brother Jamal, okay? Because it's something about us culturally where we affect people with style, too. We set the trend with style. Now, Brother Jamal here is one of our younger, our younger brothers here, young lions here, right? Yes. And when he was talking worldwide, affect the change, everything he just said, what touched me about him is his style of dress. We are freeing people and freeing mind. And I know I'm going to send this message out. I know there are a lot of our brothers and sisters who are behind in walls and incarcerated now, but they got a, 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 they call it contraband, computer or laptop, and somebody's tuned in to us, listening to us, or as we say this, they're going to get it. Brother Jamal, your style of dress with this button to the top, looking like one of them inside uniform, DOC uniforms, bro. You just connected and freed a whole bunch of brothers inside of there with that look, bro. 
Thanks for Man, that. I hope that. I mean, we. In, I was told the top button means you in service. You know what I'm saying? I, I've been doing the top button for a while. And, and I was on U Street out in, outside of Bohemian Caverns. And this rant, well, I don't say random brother. The brother came up to me and was like, man, you got the top button. That means you working. You in service. And he was a school teacher. I was like, damn, okay. <laughs> and it wasn't intentional at, at the time, but now it's intentional. So, yeah, that's we in service with the top button. You know what I'm saying? That's what that is. Yeah, I got you. Now, what I thank y'all, y'all, y'all are on it, and, and this is what we want to do. We want to have, we, we want to laugh and have fun, because because if you don't laugh and have fun, how can you deal with all that stuff we got to run into? So it is very important. Thank you, Ross, for bringing that in, and uh, y'all, y'all smiles are just you know making my day, because when we see each other smiling, then that means that even if things might not be okay in the in the in the bigger world, they okay in our world which means soon they're going to be okay out there because we're going to take our world out there. And that's what I heard y'all just say. It's very important. Uh, we want to open it up now, but I want to go back to my brother, Baba Mosi. I know I, 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 if, if it were not for Baba Mosi and Baba Congo, who are the uh, president and vice president of Division 330, we wouldn't be having these forums. And the reason we're doing it on Zoom, y'all, is because of the pandemic. But one of the things the pandemic didn't understand, it brought us together in a way where we couldn't come together. <laughs> so that's all, so so now that we all online and vibing, we're gonna take advantage of that. But one day we're gonna come back together live again. And I can see some of y'all artists performing in my backyard. Because and I, I I ain't gonna go into that, but but we set for that, Ivy. We set for that, Ross. We set for that Putu. We set for that Jamal, and we want to do the kind of healing artistic expressions that are about commerce. So we're not talking no freebies here, but I ain't going to get into that now. I'm just opening it up now. I'm just letting y'all know I'll be coming at y'all and talking about how we can do some smooth operating kind of things and maybe stream them so that so that the revenue can be even more pertinent. And of course, have good vegetarian food. So anyway, we're thinking about ways and means. And Brother Haru Forai Atta, who's my good brother, uh, he recommended me to do this thing, and I did it, and it's done. So anyway, that's just one place. So you don't gotta, you ain't got. If, if you don't get the jobs, don't worry. We're gonna make it. We're gonna make a way. Anyway, it's open now for people after Baba Mosi, if he wants to express some things or ask any questions to, to take y'all in another direction. Baba Mosi, you feeling okay? Um, yeah, I just want to give thanks to all those uh, of the panelists actually um i i'm i'm just enjoying what they're saying and i'm learning a lot um and uh I'm, i may have a question or two but uh you you must forgive me i, I if i if i start that because i'm having these spasms of course so let me but let me first ask um <laughs> here you go uh <laughs> oh boy yeah um yes uh mama ivy um let me say uh you you mentioned india i don't know what part of india you went but i know that i know that that's a that's, place with a, uh, that deals with a lot of things you, you mentioned chakras and all that sort of thing so i'm assuming that uh that's that's part of your reason for for traveling in, in that part of the world because of, because all, of all those vibrations, those vibrations. Or, yes. or, or, yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, now, what part of it were you in? My I was in Mount Abu, India, uh -huh. up in the mountains okay, of so Mount okay. Abu. Is that, that that that's more like more north? Like north. Yeah. Yes. I see. I see. Okay. okay. So, okay. so I don't know why you mentioned India, because I, I, and some people, some people can don't understand English. English. Uh, uh, a lot of people, lot of people don't, don't understand, understand Hindu either. either. Uh, uh, the largest, the largest language, language is, is called Malayalam, Malaya, East Coast, East Coast. Uh, uh, Northeast, 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 Northeast coming, down, coming down, South, South. Um, um, we also have, we also have to do to another, another spirit, spirit, many, many, many of the darkest, the darkest shaded, shaded folks are, folks are so, so I, was I was wondering, wondering that's why the world is Well, it's very interesting because I noticed <laughs> that most of the darker skinned Indian community members were the ones doing the cleaning, 
Mm-hmm. The sh- you know, the shopping. And it was very interesting to see, you know, the cast of class that um, was happening there. Um, so, yeah, it's everywhere. And while I was there, um, that there was a strike. And they said they've never had a strike in this particular region before and come to find out they were striking because of gentrification they were trying to keep people from coming into the mountainside in order to build homes and tear down the mountain and put up concrete then they they they'd rather shut down their livelihood and rather than to gentrify their communities yeah yeah I, right, I right. Just, you know you know they that can't, that can't, you know, although, although it's on, on, it's on, it's on, it's on, it's it's on, it's 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 alive, alive, alive. Alive. just like, just like Mose, in the U.S. Echo. Baba Mose, it's a terrible echo. We can barely understand what you're saying. It's a terrible yeah, echo. I have a feeling it's because of, uh, I'm not going to ask any more questions, and it might have been that I'm, if it looks like I'm on twice, it might have been. Uh, no, it's so. sounding good now. You're sounding oh. good now. Okay. But, but at any rate, I don't know what it is. But 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 what I want to do, if no, if you were finished, I don't know whether you were finished. Yeah. Well, I was just I was just mentioning the fact that the caste system is still alive and well, sure. and the Tamil sure. people being for the south, uh, the, those are you know we like to consider them our brothers. You know, uh, you know we we are we are Africans everywhere, no matter what it's right. It's like black people are everywhere, and part right. and India as much as people would like to say Asian, they're also African. So oh, um, question there, our brother Renoko Raj. It's how we feel. <laughs> right, right. Um, okay. So, um, also, I would uh, like to 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 ask her to. Um, I, I have. I, I need to some of that that same resonance that you did. Give me some of that. Maybe I'll get a little bit of healing from this bad stuff I got going on with me right now. Can Can you give some of that to me? Is it possible? If you have your bowls around you. They're not around you, okay. Well, we sent we sent Reiki to you, Baba Mosi. But uh, I, as I told you earlier today, the best thing you can do right now is to rest those cords and yeah. get lemon, get plenty of lemon. Not only echinacea, but if you want to address it immediately, golden seal. Uh, uh, do those things. Do those things right away, and right. also right. inhale steam. Yeah, yeah. Do the inhalation of steam with eucalyptus. And that that should really help to open up the so so mama, mama, mama tonight, tonight. Uh, I, I really want to come to you because uh, I want a little more balance in this. Mama Ivy has been carrying it. Sister Queen has been carrying it with all of this testosterone energy. Uh, so Mama Tendai, I, I know you've been hitting in the chat, but I, if you want to speak to anything that you heard from these wonderful guests or any kind of wisdom you want to give uh, us as a UNIA active. Uh, sister yourself, Mama Tendai? I wanted to just express gratitude. Um, you know, each morning when I get up, that's the first thing that I do. I express gratitude for another day of life, uh, for the miracle of salvation and upliftment, you know, uh, and that realizing that every breath is a miracle. But I, Mama Ivy, I want to thank you a, more than abundance. Um, because Mama Ivy, you know, was part of our Adasi healing program. And when she did the meditation, I'm sure everybody went into trance. So I appreciate the vibration that you brought, Mama. You helped us help the tone. And as you all are saying, the message that's in the music, that's in the vibration and whatever, we can feel it and we can heal from that. So I appreciate all of you and especially you young ones. I'm an old bird here. So <laughs> I've been around the block more than three or four times. And so whenever I see young people, you know, it, it, I, it lights me up and I feel very full from having heard all of you all this evening. And I'm grateful that we know that as we transition, that we leave things well in your hands, that we know that you all will go ahead. The only one little thing I was going to say is, you know, we spend so much of our time in life seeking our purpose in life. When the Yorubas are very clear, when they say your purpose is to live a life of Iwapele. Iwapele means of good character so that your good character and your good energy, your positivity, as the brother was saying, creates the environment 
for the upliftment and the continuous positive evolution of our species. All I right. Now, now I want, uh, Mama, do me a favor. Uh, you were speaking about young brothers and sisters, and you got a you got a young brother sitting beside you. I I, I call him young. I know y'all y'all y'all. No offense. Now, uh, Baba Singo is a granddaddy. So when I call you young, that don't mean that you know youngster. You know, I know y'all are grown and y'all got children. <clears throat> but please, uh, let's hear from your son. Uh, I know he's, I don't know, I hope you've heard a lot, but you know, I, what do you think about, I mean, you- you. He missed you, a little bit of it because he had his little podcast. But I, oh, okay, okay. But, but you, he heard, I think he heard enough of the spirit, the energy, to just express to us what you take on what we're doing here. Because as you know, we're not just doing this for those that's in the Zoom and those that's on Facebook and those that are gonna be able to check YouTube out. We're gonna shoot this thing everywhere we can because when you got positive energy like this, you have to spread it. And, 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 and I like to call it blacktricity. The blacktricity creates the syn synchronicity that is required to change the planet. And unlike Superman, we, we collectively got way more power than that Superman. Y'all hear me? Because we are the super beings of the most high. So without any further ado, uh, let's hear it, Kai. All right, I'm just going to, uh, I'm a Virgo, so I like to tap into Virgo energy. We like to go full circle. So we here, there, everywhere. We just... So am I, y'all. But... <laughs> Look, Ross Lynch, <laughs> he is too. <laughs> and so is, so is Jamal. So, Jamal. Yeah. <laughs> Well, first of all, I just want to thank you and this platform, my mom, and the Pan-Africanist community, like Brother Jamal was saying, we grew up in a safe environment to bring out these levels of creativity. And with that being said, and approaching music, the power of music on the worldview, I just want to take a quick second to shout out, I'm from DC, we're down south now, but go-go music. And my brother Diallo Sombre and his network have taken go-go music back to Ghana. That is powerful within itself. And we need to do more things of that. That's the new 2021 spin that we should be taking and connecting the genres. Also, speaking of genres, when I was growing up, my mom used to always get on me about um, <laughs> listening to gangster music. You see, it has a demonic tone to it. And the vibration of music and how it can influence in particular energies that you're feeling. When you're going through something, you might want to listen to some jazz, some instrumentals, some music can bring out more fiery energy, right? So even um, going down to the chain gang and slavery, that's how we would to, to mentally check out, even to the brothers in the pen when they, you know what I'm saying? That's all they got. And I dare you make fun of them when they doing that and they singing because that's the only thing they got to tap out. So the genres of music are very important and, and how we have to bridge it together. And um, like I said, just on a, on a, on a worldview, music, music is so powerful on every entity. Like I'm a culinary artist. So the first thing I want to do is put on some music so I can create. You know, music, music is, is everywhere, it's, it's prevalent. It's like, it's just like aromatherapy or any, any other type of therapy. We need that music. Music is an outlet, it's a soul, and it brings our community together. I mean, I just, uh, images of the uh, Caribbean Day Parade, Georgia Avenue Day. You see all type of people from all genres that might not even enjoy the music, but just the expression, the, the, the tone, the energy that is sent out of love, you know, as well as uh, when my brother Jamal mentioned Banneker Field, you know, being out there with some of the uh, bimbes and some of the um, Akans out there, traditional dress and we drumming, you know, <laughs> out there. But any, we weren't bothered because people were just amazed that the, the, the energy of the drum, it just transformed. People would just come out of anywhere. What, what are you guys doing? Can, can we join in? Yeah, please. We don't even know the dances, but any dance is accepted. So, that's just my little spill on the power of. of well, that, that, that's a lot. That's a lot. And I really appreciate you sharing. Now, I just want to throw something out there and we're going to go in reverse this time. We're going to start with Jamal and go to Putu, then Ross, and then we're going to end with the sister. Uh, I just want to throw this out there now. What advice would you all give to those Garveyites that are holding tradition to the UNIAACL government and striving to bring Africans together and to make a, a worldwide 
United African States. What would y'all say to us at this point? Uh, you know, whether it's a, uh, whether it's a positive message, whether or not it's a recommendation. Uh, I'm not asking for a critique or criticism, but y'all, if you feel that you want to do that, feel free to do that. But I just want y'all to speak to us because what we're doing is putting structure together for the next 100, 200 years to pass on. And you all's advice is going to be very, very important. We have quite a few parent body people on Facebook listening. The Secretary General and quite a few people are listening to this right now. And I'm asking you all, and I want to start with you, Jamal, because I believe you are the youngest with us. I want to start with you, and then we're going to move up. And I believe we're following this, the, the age thing properly. I think Putu is next, and I think Ross Ledge, I think Ross Ledge, you 50, I think, and, and, right? I know you look young. We all we all carry it so well. Uh, I know, <laughs> but, but I, I'm putting it out there for you, Ross. I wouldn't do that to the sisters, but Ivy, certainly you are last. And, and out of elder statements, state, states woman of the guests that we have. So we're gonna go in that order. So Jamal, what would you tell us or what would you give us in terms of recommendations of things that we can do better and to help artists do, you know, do, do their work? Well, I, can't speak, I can't speak to better. I think uh, better is all, uh, uh, okay. it's, it's subjective, it's relative. And also, you know, we moving, we gotta move accordingly to what the times and what the current battlefield is. Um, so I can't say better necessarily. Um, I think the first thing for cross generationally, cross generationally, excuse me, I can slur my words sometimes is story sharing and documentation. Uh, I think a big piece for me, you know, especially if we're talking about building a sense of identity, uh, or, or moving into structures, um, you know, music as a tool, especially to speak of like the jazz movement and how people were able to advance on their instruments so quickly and, and so effortlessly in certain ways or seemingly was they were almost schools like these master teachers playing in their bands was like going to a certain school and so in that school you learn form you learn instrument technique you know work ethic but you also learn so you get stories and you get the path and so you could kind of get uh pieces of what led to where you are at that current moment and i think uh, because of how fast information can move right now, um, what you get is I think you have a, a lot of younger people, younger than myself, I'm 36 in August, I'll be 36, um, who have all the information, but none of the context, none of the story that went to it. And so it's hard uh, to get a full understanding if you don't have all the pieces. And a lot of times what that leads is to uh, I don't want to call it ignorance, but arrogance, because if I hear you play Coltrane for a kid that's 15, well, they heard it. It's already in their subconscious, but they don't know everything that led up to Coltrane. They don't know everything that Coltrane influenced because their timeline, when they jump into the timeline, it's already here. So the thing that we need, and I'm lucky to have, is elders around that could give me stories and show me the pieces that led up to the to that. So I bring that all the way back just to say like the piece of story sharing, documenting, because right now what the youth really got is great ways to document your story and make it sexy, you know, and I don't mean sexual, but make it sexy. Like, oh, they can put your story and gloss it and shine in a way that you will feel more confidence about it. And then that's how we, we remove some of those barriers that I think are really just uh, self-imposed or really more mental barriers than actual like physical barriers as we got sister Tendai and, and her son right there like that imagine I know they share stories you can see that and that's a part of how he, he can this brother can go and build his identity and build with the next and share with his friends and you know for years I and this is me I, I'm only of the last maybe four years really tapping into my father's artistic legacy and tying it to my own I had to go out and create my own so, but that gave me the advantage in a way because I was able to go out and fail on my own and then come back with this and reach back to stories, reach back to the stories and see, okay, these things that we thought were new in the moment, they was only new for maybe in that moment, they're new to somebody, but a lot of these ideas, these feelings, these thoughts that we have, they go back and predate us and there's lines and lineages and you don't have to go back that far to get layered stories. 
So mm. I said, I just said a lot to say, let's document these, no, like we document these conversations, document the story with the your local business owner, your local musician who he may not have the, the story that's on VH1, but it's a significant story nonetheless. So let's just, you know, no, continue to document. And that's, you don't have to be an artist or nothing, just everybody's story. Thank you so much for that, bro. And and, I, and I'm going to take, take your advice. So y'all, what advice would you give us? <laughs> so, cause I, I got you, bro. And I, I love you, man. I really appreciate you. And I, and I love the way everybody is articulating what's on their mind and, and sharing because it's going to go a long way. Putu. Yes, peace, peace, man. Um, that's a great um, answer, Brother Jamal. I look like you got me by two months, man. You got me uh, on the age factor. I thought I thought I already I thought I was really older than you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the kind of youngin out here, but um, um. So as far as um, as far as um, like the elders, I think this right here is a perfect example right here. You know, y'all already like. Like this is, I really got to commend you all, uh, especially you, Baba Sangor, Baba Mosi, for having this platform here for us to engage. Cause it's like, what what we face, and sometimes it's not even just our generation, but generations before that. Sometimes it's like a gap between the old, the elders and the and the, and the youth. It happens every time, um, and I think right now. This is one of the most important times that we need to share stories, as Brother Jamal was saying, and we have the opportunity to do it. Where, like, you don't have to, we don't have, we don't have to, like, move, trans, you know, go, go, go far. We got to take advantage of the technology. Like, um, an example of something I was thinking, like, we could have on any given day just a, a topic or a question to ask the elders, like, and this is something that I have done um, over the years, certain times, like. I asked elders, okay, where were you when yesterday, or uh, a few days ago was um, April 4th, that's um, Martin Luther King was assassinated. And like, I don't, I wasn't around. A lot of my peers weren't around, but some of you guys was around and y'all remember exactly where you were and what happened immediately, that and how that affected y'all. Like we could have had, could have, we could still have it. Like, okay, where were you? You know what I mean? Were you around? And then have the elder, the youngins, like the, the the youth, listen. And then as it, as it connects to music, we can tie in because from what I know, people like James Brown um, was people who came out there and kind of helped carry the people through those times. You feel me? And so then we can translate it to what's going on now. We could talk about what happened when, you know, in our generation with the Tupacs and the Biggies to the Nipsies and the so on and so forth, the traumas, we can share stories because sometimes I done seen how elders um, like, damn man, like, why are you crying? And I, um, Triple X, that's not like the, a younger generation than me, but like, it really affected the, like, you know, maybe the 24, 25 year old. And then Nipsey, that kind of touched, you know, me, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, but if you don't listen to the music, you're not tuned in, you may not understand, but you might be able to reflect on a time that, it, it, you know, one of your idols, you know, passed away and everything like that. So I'm thinking, saying just having simple Zoom talk, you know, I've been mean? sharing stories, interchange, exchanging stories. And then as, as far as the parent body of some of these organizations or institutions, specifically what we can do is the system, as we know it, they, they, have their, they have their meetings and they've been having their meetings in person for the longest. But now a lot of their meetings is just like this on Zoom and they're putting it on YouTube, they're putting it online so we can actually see what they're talking about and what they're trying to plan. So they just had the World um, Economic Forum, you know, a meeting, a major meeting talking about the change in the digital currency. We can look at what they're talking about and then like if we're going to be operating on that level. So um, that's just my two cents on that. Uh, Putu, I'm glad you mentioned that because Brother Haru brought that to my attention and he's going to share a link with me of a Senegalese brother that was dropping science about how you can get out of the, the, the so we talk about getting out of capitalism and getting out of the system of white supremacy, but a lot of people don't understand and I'm not going to go into it of how that kind of technology can aid and assist 
people, uh, particularly with the different currency exchanges that exist around the world with the oppressors. So that's a very important point. I'm gonna move to uh, you, Ross Ledge. Unmute, bro. Unmute, oh, yeah. I, I'm unmuted, but I gotta backtrack just a little bit before I answer the question for the Virgo energy in the room. <laughs> you know what I mean? Shout out to the Virgo energy in the room. And Virgo is that earthly universal sign, you know? So I like to say um, a couple of things, and this is gonna tie into the question too. What I always say, Africa let out that call long before the internet of the drum. Do good, right, left, Naya Bingy, do good. I lick that drum in Ghana. And I always tell people when they come across the ocean, and it squeezed down the Potomac right along the Anacostia River. We in Gogo heard that same vibration double up to that same jumbo beat, right? So while I was there in Ghana, Virgo energy, I licked that drum in Ghana in Abajo Cafe. I played the drum in there. When I reached back here, one of the biggest shows that I was just called for for the start of my season this year, two weeks ago. I was called down on the Atlantic coast, one of the first places you would reach coming from Africa. I was called to Wilmington, North Carolina to do a performance at UNC Wilmington. Before that performance at night, I had to go speak to students of seventh and eighth grade at a school, okay? Well, my Virgo family in the room, the name of that school, remember Ross Lidge is original from Southeast Washington, D.C. The name of that school was DC Virgo. So how did that vibration meet me right back here on this side of the Atlantic, okay? All right, so um, yes, to answer the question, I took some notes down while the brothers was answering because I would say to all of the Garveyites, our elders out there who have been uh, teaching and bringing it to me, hold it, don't let it go, please. Truth shall reveal, you know, I took these notes and I will say this, before I had enlightened myself with certain books, uh, Garvey, I was still learning from the Rastafari elders and destruction of the black civilization by Chancellor Williams, you know, things like that. Baba Senghor, before my hair was ever this long, it was really little. <laughs> and Baba Senghor, he can hold you. And he can talk to you. And when you're a young man and you're a young kid, it can always be nerve wracking. Come on now, brother, because when he got to pull a point, he going to hold you like this and pull on you and talk to you because he want to drive his point. And I would say, Lord, this man just get to me. I want to run and duck and hide from him. But how ironic are we here today sharing the same platform and same message because it was important to him that he got to me because he knew with him, like y'all said, planting the seeds of the words in me, if I wasn't hearing it through him, I was going to reach somewhere in this circle because he knew I was standing in the circle as a young man at that time with his word sound was going to reach me. In any corner, quadrant of D.C. or wherever I was trying to go, he, I think he saw what Rago potential was before I fully knew. I knew I had the blessing and the gift, but that's just been our communication. So that's why I say again to the elder Garveyite, hold it, don't let it go. Whatever you gotta do, push it to the youth. Um, it may be nerve wracking, but like your parents, your parents, my brother sitting there with his mom. He said his mom say that, 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 uh, um, gangster music. But you see how he full circle sitting there with mom today? He understood what he mean. And together they got a reason that she understands what he's saying where that may be the only relief for somebody in that mindset. That music, them seven notes, calm them again. You know, so it's a conversation between the young and the elder, but we want you to know as elders, please, we are getting it. Only other thing that I would say um, with communicating to us is, as a brother was saying, storytelling, document, uh, documentation, Media. I posted a link in here of a very, um, Bernie Spear, one of my favorite artists, always said, sang a song. Yes. 
We want a subject in school on Marcus. I just posted a YouTube link that I found about two months ago. There is an animated cartoon yeah. on YouTube. Yeah. It tells all of Marcus Garvey's story. Yeah. And that thing, it I'm sure kids in second, third, grade, four, they can see that. And it's very historical. So I posted that to say to us as elders, sometimes we become locked out on learning what the youth is doing now. But as uh, Brother Jamal was saying, allow ourselves as elders to learn this TikTok, this Instagram. You know, we might have to get a form like this so the youngin can teach us how to do some See, the video, you don't need this big clunky video and going into editing no more. Everything can be video and edited from that cell phone then. Everything. So sometimes in our learning process, when we become elders, it's becoming slow or we're frustrated. We don't want to take the time to, man, I don't want to learn that. But TikTok is evolutional now mm -hmm. to get this message. So single. Imagine if you yourself was a TikToker pushing out this Garvey message mm -hmm. and you get paid a single after 10,000 views. Yeah. Brother, you'd have been hit 10,000 views with this uh, Garvey information you had. So, you know so, what I mean? Yeah, and but, that's how, that's how yeah. it's, not, it's not so much about the income. You know why you're doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this Ross, is what's going to be used to reach the next generation. Ross, I really appreciate that. And, and believe me, we heard you. And that, that, that I've already started doing some TikTok stuff and, and it's gonna be more. Uh, brother, brother, brother Ron Bob Simple, who went before us in January, all of his stuff is all on TikTok. And so I, I totally agree with what you just said. And uh, one of the things that we're working on is transitioning into ways and means like that. So thank you. And I'm glad you shared it. So it didn't come from Baba Singo, it came from Ross Lee. <laughs> so so but, without any further ado, uh, we are, we, we're getting close to closing time, but Mama, 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 Mama Ivy, uh, and, and, and Ivy, you know I call you Mama Ivy because <laughs> me, 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 to me, you, to me are, you, are, you are Mama, you are Mama Ivy. Ivy. I'm Mama Ivy. <laughs> so I was thinking, oh my God, what? I don't even know what to say. But then all of a sudden, all this started coming. So here it comes. You ready? Copyright your work. Trademark your work. Register your music. ASCAP, BNI, whatever it is, so that no one is, is, is stealing your, protect your intellectual property um create a legal trust so with the details of everything that you have ever done so that you could pass it on to uh someone else just like brother gray has done and it will take a moment but that let it be there for the next level of creativity um study how to resist the matrix because the matrix is is crashing right now so we have to navigate that as we are moving forward with our art and um, to curate, curate your work for protection of the legacy. Support the UNIA. You still doing Black Star Concept? Yeah. So whatever it is that you do, flow it through there. And, so, and I'm gonna suggest that you make it easy for people like me to know how to do that. You're on mute. Quick, quick, please. I, I wanna, uh, I got that echo again, but I wanna thank all of you all for that, 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 that pointed uh, advice. Uh, and believe me, we hear you, uh, not only those of us in this uh, Zoom, but hear you loud and clear. But I really want to just, just say, not only am I appreciative, or we are appreciative of you all sharing with us, uh, this is just one hit. Uh, of course, we are family. Uh, we have what is called Black Star Action Network International, which was founded by my brother Chief Fode in Sierra Leone, who was an artist who worked with uh, Malcolm X's grandson. And Many of us are part of Basani, 
and Bassani is attached to the hip with the UNIA ACL, RRC 2020. So a lot of the things we, we're talking about are in motion, but we need to speak truth to power to each other. Each one needs to teach one. Nobody knows it all. Everybody, the more you know, the more you should know you don't know. That came from my good brother, Jolly D. And for those who don't know Jolly D, Jolly D don't do a lot of stuff on, on media. Jolly D is still teaching young brothers and sisters. And I wanna, I just wanna throw that out there. But I also want to say uh, to Baba Mosi, thank you Baba Mosi for allowing Division 330 for hosting this particular kind of forum. But I do think this is very important. Uh, our Secretary General is watching us on Facebook and she made it clear to let me know she's watching. And that's our queen mother, uh, uh, Mama uh, Ivy. You know, Mama, Mama Mary has been around a little while and she's been a teacher for many years and she's in Chi-Town. And I wanna just hail up everybody. I wanna let you all know that we're very grateful that you all have taken your time out on this Freedom Friday. We will be sending this the Zoom link to you all uh, and because uh, uh, it's been recorded. I believe it's been recorded. I'm pretty sure it's still being recorded, you know, but at any rate, we're going to send that to everybody. Please spread it to everybody that you can. Uh, for all of the things that have been put in the uh, chat, we got it reserved because, like I said, we recorded this. So, but please, I want to let Baba Mosi, uh, if you can, Baba Mosi, uh, rather than me, close us out. Are you able to close us out, Baba Mosi? I know you thanked everybody, but I want, I want, I wanted to make sure I turn it back over. Mama Tendai, you got something to say? Right quick, right quick. You know, I'm always working with the youth. I'm working with a young brother, Nigerian brother by the name of CJ Awoyinka, and I will give you the information for him. He has created a film called The Elders. And this short film basically deals with the Nigerian elders and the music that they developed so that they can show the progress of how that background and that history has come full fold in terms of the way that we're dealing with music now. So I'm putting that out there because uh, Brother Jamal, Brother Putu and whatever, I want to help this brother get his film out there as well. Uh, you know, because he's a, he's a young man and, and you don't, don't know, I don't live in DC anymore. I'm in North Carolina, but I work with historically black colleges and universities, even still at my age. So I have about 10 or 11 schools I'm working with. Um, so and, and Mama Tendai, <laughs> Mama Tendai is not only an active, uh, active organizer with the UNIA, she's active with Adasi and a whole lot of other things. And that's one of the things that's very important is that we want to lead by example to our brothers and sisters who follow us, not just our grandchildren and children. So I want to thank you, Mama Tendai. In fact, Baba Mosi, you want to let Mama Tendai close us out or you want to close us out? Uh, I, I'll do it. It's not a problem, I, you know. <laughs> okay. Um, I just hear, I hear it in your, I hear right, it in your yeah, nasal yeah, passion. Okay, but uh, yeah, it, that, that's just the resonance, you know. <laughs> yeah. Electricity is doing its work now, no matter what. All right. Uh, brothers and sisters, thank you very much again. It's been a pleasure to be on with you. It's been a pleasure listening to your vibe. And it's been a pleasure to know that you care about our people as well as we are. And in a sense, you, you've given us even some advice as to how we can approach things. So we, we, we're listening to it. And we would, in some way, like to gather with you at another time so we can see how else we can work with you maybe members just putting it out there all right you know when we close we use the motto which is a very simple thing three words and you can follow after me you need something brother mm -mm. Single? no 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 i was getting ready i was with you all right all right you just you raise your right fist one god one God, one aim, one aim, one destiny, one destiny. Thank you very much. Peace and love. Great. All right. And we thank all you Facebook listeners out there. We about Sam, you can take us off of Facebook now. And we really thank you, brother Sam, even though you didn't come back over, I thought you might have had some key questions for some of the artists, but I, I know, I know how you roll and I know all of them know you. I know, you know, Jamal, I know, you know, Ross Ledge and Putu and Mama Ivy. I, 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 I think you're familiar with brother Sam, right? 
Sam, you want to come back over on this side real quick, just just to say hello to everybody. I know we locking down. No, I think that's there where the ghost is. No, uh, he came on. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, down there we say all eyes on DC. But uh, okay, it's all good. Anyway, Sam, thank you so much for helping out. Brother Heru was traveling. We really appreciate you all. Mama Tendai and Kai, thank you. Bross Ledge, thank you so much. Putu, thank you. Jamal, congratulations again, Baba. Go ahead and help mama out. I know, I know you got she got some work for you to do. <laughs> and thank you for staying with us for two hours, Jamal. And keep up the great work, brother Jamal. And let us know, however, anytime. I mean, you know, this family, man, you got a lot of uncles in, you know. So, so so feel free if you need much need appreciated. It. Yeah, and, yeah. And thank y'all yeah. for your time for real. Yeah, you know, stay Ivy, connected. I love you, sister Ivy. I know you had a big one earlier. Uh, on Zoom, and uh, you, you seem to be Zooming all over the place these days, <laughs> and that's a good thing. Hail up my brother Baba Salim for me, and let. And by the way, Ivy, uh, 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 we missed y'all down there in the VI, but, but 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 I know you know what it was. Salim would not come because we couldn't find a dog sitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear you, but that's but okay. That's okay. He wouldn't leave the dog just anywhere. He wouldn't leave them. And I know I don't want to leave them anywhere either. So, so, I, don't <laughs> so I don't know what the problem is. Salim, Salim, Salim lived down there in the VI for a while. Wow. Yeah, he was actually the executive director of that camp. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. That you exactly. all went to. Mm. Right, right. Well, camp well, Arawak. Yeah, I hear you. Well, you all take care. I got business to take care of. And I uh, appreciate y'all. And they talk, y'all talk about dog business. I got a little dog here, Ziggy. He ready to go for a walk. He been, <laughs> he been running, been running all. Bless his heart. All right. I appreciate y'all. Putu, Putu, are you in DC area, man? Oh, no, no, I didn't, I didn't make it out there. Oh, okay, week. no problem, no problem. I just want to say, because I want to try to connect with you. But uh, anyway, stay strong. And uh, everybody, thank you so much. Really appreciate you, appreciate all. you all. And, uh, and uh, you all can look at the you can look at the flyer, the flyer on Facebook, Facebook, Facebook and, and, and support and it on your, on your page, page. page. But we will, but we send, will send, send all the YouTube. YouTube. We're going to send you this one as posted. Love you, Mama Tendai. I miss you. Bless up, everyone. Love you back, Mama. Love you back. Rosafeek, James, and Teresa, y'all, thank y'all for joining us. Yeah, Bo, it's been an honor and a pleasure. Yeah, uh, powerful, wasn't it, Rosafeek? I know, I know, Love Supreme was coming all over over the place, yeah. wasn't it? <laughs> yes, sir. Always. All right, bro. Y'all take Thanks care. Happy blessings, everybody. Peace.